All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. That's what you want to do. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Hashtag F2BQ is Fade to Black Questions. And you can post everything up there for myself, for tonight's guest, Kevin Moore. It's going to get a little heated in here tonight, so I had to wear a T-shirt. Yeah. Getting getting ready. Getting ready. I'm shadow boxing. Kevin Moore. Tomorrow night, Dr. Robert Schock is here. Wednesday night, it is Randall Carlson. So we've got a great week lined up. Of course, Thursday night will be another fader night with open lines all night long. Quickly becoming my favorite night of the week, except for tonight because Kevin is here. Kevin is a UK-based radio and television host. He's a journalist, film producer, filmmaker, director. His show, The Kevin Moore Show, provides a platform for which some of the world's greatest philosophers, paranormal researchers, life coaches, spiritual teachers, authors can communicate their work, research, observations, and reflections and infuse into our common knowledge their understanding of life in the universe. The guests are experienced individuals who aspire to empower and teach the viewers, listeners, to search for spiritual solutions to their daily living. Kevin is currently working on not one, but two documentary films, which we will be discussing tonight, as well as his career, his show, and the current state of our precious and beautiful community. The website is thekevinmoreshow.com, and I would like to welcome, for the first time to Fade to Black, Kevin Moore. Kevin, Kevin, how you doing? I'm good, Jimmy, and thank you very much for having me on. Hey, Kevin, uh, before we get started, okay, oh, you know what? First things first, I got to do the first-time guest disclaimer. So let's get that out of the way, all right? Which is, Kevin, it's just you and I sitting on my couch having a conversation as friends. And where that conversation starts, it starts. Where it ends, it ends. But we'll we'll end as friends. You ready to go? I am, mate. I am. Let's do this. Okay. Uh, first question out of the gate. Tell me you've got a jump shot. Just tell me you've got a jump shot. <laughs> of course, Jimmy. Of okay. Course oh, okay. <laughs> how, how, Kevin, I'm six foot tall. How tall are you? You know, I'm I'm, I'm about six five. So we've met each other before, and uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm six five. Um, the picture, I should have been a basketball player, right? You should have. The picture that you and I took together, you don't look 6'5". <laughs> look... I remember that picture now. That's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I was slouching that day, and that day you were standing straight and proud. I don't know. But uh, you look uh, you look much taller than that. But, yeah, when you know, when you're given that kind of gift, right, physically – I hope you have a jump shot. That's all, you know, so you can go out there and 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 take advantage of what I don't have. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, uh, in, in incredible height. So anyway, um let's back up a little bit here. I want to uh first uh introduce you to our audience which most know who you are, but what they don't know about you is is how you got started down this path. And I, I think it's an interesting one. Uh, uh, ouch, ouch. I don't know what that was. But um, did all of this start for you in school, in college, or were you already on a paranormal path before that? You know, I think as I got close to the end of my old life, my past life, selling computer software mm-hmm. and other things that I was doing, I, I, I remember getting into Alex Jones. I remember listening to a lot of Art Bell. I do not remember when and how it started, right? Um, but I just became addicted to, to art and probably a bit addicted to Alex Jones. And the career that I was doing, which was computer software, was just dying to death. It was at the sort of the time of 2008 when the uh, crash was going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just decided to myself, I'm never going to put myself in a situation again where I don't have a, a career or something with qualifications to back myself up onto. So I had a career in electronics. That's what I, that's what I studied at uh, college back in the day. Mm-hmm. And I decided to go to university at 30 years old right. and study for radio broadcasting, which in the end I left that course and, and changed over to television. So I finished my degree in television. 
Yeah, you and I, uh, the reason why I bring that up is you and I did a lot of the very, very similar things. Career changes, 2008, you know, we're, we're adults, we're growing up, and then you go and, and just follow your passion at that age. And I, I what I find a, a, a about that is, first off, I'm glad that you did it. The second thing is, for the audience, go and do what, if, 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 if there is something, you're never too old. Right, just go no. and and pull the trigger and and follow your passion. You know, find your bliss. Go and do it. And, and absolutely. So, okay. Now, what about? Well, the, let me let me let me say this. I mean, you know, listen. I've you know, look. This is gonna. This is already out there, and and I'll just say it as well. Look, you know, prior to doing the computer software, the computer software was something that I was uh, uh, I was self employed. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It wasn't mm-hmm. a, a company. I was it was my own company. But also, I was involved in the adult industry as well. I was, uh, I did have a, you know, I had tried to get up and running a sex toy business, right, back in the day. And it never worked. It never fruitioned. It wasn't meant to be. Every time I tried to do something that wasn't in my alignment, it never worked out. And I have no embarrassment saying that. I don't really care, to be honest. This is, this is information that's already been doxed on me. Right. Thanks to something else we're going to talk about a bit later on. Right. But I would just rather be open about it, right, and just be honest. Something that a lot of us in this industry apparently are not very good at. Hmm. You know what I used to do? No idea. I, I'll just let it out now. I, I, I was a, a sign twirler um, in, in, a, in a Tigger outfit in front of an insurance company (laughs) there you go if that's true if that's true jimmy there you go i did it i did it i did it with pride and i uh i I would wear the tigger outfit uh 24 7 i started to uh form uh a connection to it so i would wear it Uh, i would only take it off when i took a shower and then uh, you know, I, I I stopped taking showers and I started cleaning myself with my tongue, the tigger, <laughs> you know, and, and so there you go. It took a couple of years well, uh, to wean off of it, but but I eventually, uh, I, uh, I, I went I think, through a 12-step program. The, the problem I find in this industry, right, and, and, and I call it an industry, but, you know, we, if we're going to be spiritual, we can't. We know we've got to be squeaky clean, you know, almost Jesus-like, right. and that's just not the reality of the industry or, or, or the way that it is. Right. We come. I do believe we come down here for our soul to get the most out of everything, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, we're so easy, aren't we, just to turn on one another if if we've not been completely, you know, as I say, squeaky clean from the outset. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's just not life. It's not life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but, well, it never was for me anyway. So well, yeah. Maybe I was a bit of a rogue. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah, uh, I come from the music industry, and I lived through the 80s on the Sunset Strip and beyond. Right. So uh, I, that's all I have to do is just say that. I, I that's it. I've <laughs> anybody Sex, can, drugs and rock that's and roll, it. Yeah, you just go and right. use your imagination. Yeah. I'm yeah. I've never claimed anything. So, but anyway, okay. Uh, <laughs> but but I, I think also what uh, what I'm very interested in is the paranormal aspect because the uh, your knowledge, your foundation when it comes to channeling or the paranormal or UFOs or life after death and parallel worlds, time travel, all of these subjects that fall underneath that that umbrella for this community, uh, you have. Where did the interest for that come from? Well, I had a UFO experience with my family, and we don't really talk about it. It's not something that we get together. It's not something we can even really get together and talk about, to be honest. It was, it was such a, a, a weird, um, crazy experience. How old were you? How old? I, I think I was about... 13. Oh, so you remember it. Okay, what happened? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I just remember this, this, you know, this silver-shaped disc being at, uh, outside the side of my house. I remember calling my parents thinking, what the hell is this This thing that was hovering it out there? We had no reference reference for it. I, I, my memories faded. I remember going outside the front of the house, and then there was an, it, it had come across the house. And then I remember later on in the, in the evening – multiple sort of crafts in the sky and then my next memory from all this is some sort of cigar shaped craft moving along the sky uh with the weirdest writing on the side and 
you know, my sister drew a picture of that the next day and she still got that picture as a kid. And, um, you know, it, it's something we don't talk about. It's something we can't talk about because there's no reference to it. None of us understand or understood what it was. But it, I, I, I guess if that, that was my only experience I had. And if that was a trigger, then maybe. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how useful those stories are. Do you know what I mean? Did you go and, and start jumping into the subject and books and videos and, and everything else? My father was very much into Edgar Cayce, and I detested those books that he had. I really could not stand them. Right. Um, but it wasn't, like I say, till I got to um, probably 30 that I realized, oh, my God, um, you know, I do really enjoy these subjects. And if I was going to do something, I think I want to put my, my, my heart and, and, and into becoming the – what I thought back in the day was the next Art Bell because I was so, um, he, he just inspired me so much when he inspired me to go to university. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. And uh, when you got, when you got started to get into radio, especially in the beginning, how quickly did you learn that it's not easy? I remember the first day, right? I got the offer. I, I got syndicated in the UK on about 13 community radio stations. I just worked my butt off right to, to, to get this done whilst at university. And it just became my life. I went to uni to, to get a career. I knew what I was going for at 30. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And in the end, I remember phoning a TV company up in the UK uh, that was on sort of a backwater station in, on satellite station in the UK. And they agreed that I could have the chance to, you know, broadcast on their platform for free once a week a TV show. So, you know, as a student, we, we all got together in different departments and we, we started the more show uh, for TV. And that was just at the beginning of the sort of transfer of going over to just doing a TV degree, basically. So, yeah, I finished with a with a TV degree. But, yeah, radio, it's our oh, mate. I, I've been doing this for a while now. And it is, uh, I, I don't know, I, I've... Um, I I would say it's not easy doing it with what you're doing right now, doing it every day. Uh, well, except for weekends, man, you gotta love it. And I don't think I love it as much as I did do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and plus, you see, yeah, and I even broadcast on the weekends because of coast to coast. You know, oh, so, of course, yeah, yeah, coast yeah. To coast. So yes. it's, yeah, there are yeah, some I, months that go by where I don't have any days off where I broadcast every single night. Well, because you love it, you love it, you love it, and I don't. And that's why <laughs> I'm not the next art bell, and that's why you know I'm, I'm not doing the things that I'm doing. Um, I yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, I was going to ask another question, but you, you just reminded me when. Uh, when you go and listen to somebody that is was was he's no longer with us as gifted as Art Bell was or other radio host, and you can drive down the road or whatever and listen to him, and it seems like you can listen to him for hours, and that is how good they were. At he their was craft. good. Yeah, he was good. He was good, and uh, you know, um, I, I'm, from what I've been told, he wasn't. I mean, you knew him quite well, but you was working for him, weren't you? Back back in the day. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't the most easiest man. That's the kind of feeling I get <laughs> from mm. people that I've spoken to. But what a broadcaster. And it's such a shame that he, that he has crossed. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, his, he effect, his, his effect on people, uh, including myself and like you, right, was so profound that yeah. um, I think it is best that, you know, there are a lot of people out there that had very, very negative experiences with art. Um, but there's nothing that those people can say about art, no matter what it is, that's going to affect people's memories or compassion that they have for the man. So I'm just going to let it, you know, just rest. I'm not saying that, you know, my experience, uh, was negative or all negative or all positive. It, what I haven't done and I won't, won't do, I'm not going to share anything, uh, private about art. I'm just not no. going to do it. I'm not. And uh, positive or negative, because I, those are all private things, right? We never did anything public together. So, therefore, everything is private, and he's no longer here. So, it just stays there, and 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 that's it. And I think that's the best way to uh, to treat the man. So, now, um, at the beginning of the Moore show, before we hit this break, was it always 
uh, spirituality and the paranormal and and uh, you know ascension was it always that from the beginning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My main thing for doing that show, I, I kind of got to this place in the end was if I could get something from the place that we end up going to and that we've come from that we could use in the present moment now that would make this moment more fulfilling, more loving, more joyful, happier for others. Then that's the information I, I kind of wanted to bring in to this show. Uh, whether I achieve that or not, I don't know really. I, I, I know I helped some people. I got you know a few emails back here and there that you know I really helped people on their journey. And I, you know, just obviously you know what it's like when you're solo and stuff. It's difficult to you know to do everything and get back to everyone. You know, but um, yeah, I, um, I I wanted to make others others have, have, live a more fulfilling you know joyous life and and for myself to be honest actually thinking about it as well i will also wanted it for my journey i wanted to find out is this true is there anything in this and what have i discovered uh i think i know just this that we're a soul having a human experience and um we can't we do create our reality if, if, I, if i've learned anything that's key it's probably that sums it up what, what do you, where do you think we are with that today? Uh, the, our community has been on, on, a, on a quest for a long time, seekers of knowledge and trying to figure out what's going on. And they know that things are different and they're trying to get to it. But then there's the other part. There's the science part and there's the status quo part that chooses to ignore, you know, simple thing like ghosts, right? They just, just choose to ignore it. Um, where where are we with that today? Uh, you know, with our own reality and these questions, are we getting close to answers? And I think, as you know, I mean, I mean, my feeling on that is you've got to have the science in there. To ignore the science is just, you know, how is that helpful? We live in a grounded, shared reality, and when we go beyond that shared reality into complete nonsense, I think that 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 can't be helpful. I think science plays an important role. Um, but I mean, to be too scientific and not spiritual and not have the balance, I think that's where the issues come in sometimes. Uh, but I do not deny science and I think it plays a very important role. But uh, unfortunately, most people into the sciences do, do, you know, unless there's repeatable proof there that, that something is and continues afterwards, it's, it, the science is just not there yet. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. And then when we have the scientists now, as they are learning more and more about the complexities of everything, including the universe, that it is now probably not as simple as what science was trying to say it was leading up to this, that now there must be something going on. There's got to be something else a little bit more deeper here. And th that that would answer these complex issues uh, of of everything, right? Right. When we when you consider the idea that the universe is infinite, for example, which you know I can't get that in my head. I'm pretty sure most people can't. Right. Um, then then there are possibilities, but you know again, doing the work that I'm doing right now, the documentary that I'm doing right now, it's really helped to ground me. That, that do not get too far out there in the woo-woo, that we are here to have a human experience. And when you deny that part of you and, you know, you, you want to be something that, that isn't kind of human in a sense or, you know, you just, you, you're denying what you could have here, uh, that, that's a problem for me, that, it, that, re that really is. And um, it's a double-edged sword. And I'll tell you, uh, I, well, I want your opinion on this. We have, when we go too far into the woo-woo, uh, you have those that are suggesting the woo-woo, right? Yeah. And then you have the audience that is accepting of the woo-woo. Why is it yeah. that the community is so ready to to jump on board with absolutely fantastical stuff? Why are they so wanting to jump on board, so easy to jump on board? Because it's escapism. It's 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 uh, you know it, you know a lot of people get into this from leaving religion. They want an alternative to religion, so they come into this right. community. I see it more and more nowadays. Right. And you know t it's still that thing of tell me what to think, tell me what to do, and and and, and, and I'll and I'll do it. You know what I mean? But um, I don't I don't know for the answer for that. Um, what. I think it's just on groundedness, but at the same time, you know, I've been there, you know, I've been on that journey of, of, you know, going too far to the woo woo and, and not being grounded enough sometimes. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's the, 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 the way you want to go, fine. 
But, um, you know, I'll say again, we do live in a shared reality. And uh, to deny certain things is just uh, not helpful for the, the human experience, I don't think. Yeah, the, the woo-woo for me uh, very early on was Billy Meyer. And I I went full yeah. I went full in on on Billy and I was young man I was twenty one right twenty this is nineteen eighty eighty five and and I jump into the Billy Meyer stuff and quickly it, it only took a couple of years uh, later where I realized that it wasn't what it was supposed to be and no. I hated that feeling of being sucked in. And and I think sometimes, I mean, what if some of these experiences are, you know, people picking them up from other realities? I mean, it, I mean, that sounds so woo-woo to me right now saying that, right? Even though I've practiced channeling, we're going to get into all that, I know, on this interview, right? Right, right. But, um, but I mean, what if sometimes people are having bleed-throughs from other realities and stuff, and mm-hmm. they think it's this reality, but actually it's not. You're just picking up from something else, and, it's, right. it's, and the confusion sets in there. Maybe. But I mean, you talk about the Billy Meyer case and, and you know, you know that, that would be a, for myself. I'd love to research that case one day and, and really look into it. But then, you know, I've met Corey Good. I'm just going to say it. You know, I told his when, when, when I met Corey, I told his agent, I don't think I believe the story. And his agent was, well, I don't think you should. You should research it and look into it. But I know I know you've covered that story quite a bit. But I, I, I think I would love to do a, a documentary on Corey Good one day, a nice one, a sensible one. I don't think it would ever be as disruptive and painful as the one that I'm doing right now, right? I wouldn't do that. I mean, let's face it, he's not murdered anyone. But, um, you know, when you look at Corey Good, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, there's a man that's talking about, you know, leaving this atmosphere, having done 20 and back and everything else. Again, I don't know much about the story, but I'm just saying, well, you know, that, that that's an obvious one in the room, isn't it? Well, we've been through it before. You know, there is that situation there. There is, uh, we could uh, uh, go back to things like uh, the alien autopsy and and yeah. and selling, you know, 50 million videotapes at $50 a pop. You know, <laughs> think about that and, and the live Fox television show that was done and, and the yeah. people that still today believe that that's a real video. And, it, they, you know, they're so, they're, they're so invested into it. Um, that's and, right. That's and, right. And, and I could... or, or, or people like Henry Smith. You know, I mean, I, I interviewed him. He seemed like a nice guy. Do I believe his story? No. I mean, people seem to think I do. Of course I don't. But, you know, as a, as a person go, seems to be quite a nice guy. But again, I've never researched his story. I can't really comment on it, right? Mm-hmm. But as someone that we've both met, that's where I stand on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, oh, I've, I've said this many times. We've got to take a break here. Um, either people resonate with the story or they don't, right? And, and, and I leave it up to everybody, just like you do. You know, it, it, you, it's up to you to go one way or the other. But Unless what is, there's a documentary made on it and it shows that the story was absolutely <laughs> fake. That's yeah, a difference. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. That's not what I'm referring to. But of course, uh, we'll get to that. What I'm saying is that um, when we have in in our community things that we can't prove, like the flying saucer over your parents' house, right? Where it's I've had all of the sightings that I've had. I, I don't have. But I, I, I'm I don't have a story to contact in the desert. You know what I mean? I'm making money from it. That's the difference. Right, right. But okay, hold on, <laughs> hold on. What I'm saying is, I I don't have a T-shirt or anything, but I want people to listen to me, and 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 to you know hopefully understand what I am trying to say. And in this community, that's what we have to do is be able to to do that and practice discernment. What has happened though, Kevin, is it's gotten out of control, and that's what you're that referring true. to. Let's take a break right good. here. Our guest tonight is Kevin Moore, uh, formerly of The Moore Show, <laughs> now, as a, <laughs> now as a documentarian. Uh, I'm just cracking a little funny there. Our guest tonight's Kevin Moore. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back. More with Kevin after this short break. You're listening to a preview of Fade to Black. To get the full episode, go to JimmyChurchRadio.com. 
and get our podcast. Click on the podcast banner or sign up in the membership area for downloadable MP3s. Everything commercial free. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Kevin Moore of The Moore Show. Which he said, <laughs> Kevin, did you actually say you don't care about The Moore Show anymore? Are you that knee deep in into this uh, film stuff now? I would say that... Um... <sighs> I've, I've, you know what? It's funny when 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 you when you are um, following your bliss sometimes, and following what really, you know, what 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 feels like purpose and what feels like you know a happy space to be in. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of things around you change, and that which you thought you were here to do uh, can can suddenly shift as well. And and I guess you know that's how I feel about my talk show right now. I've worked on doing my show for, for, you know, many years, put a lot of hours and, and love into it, just, just like yourself. But is that where I'm going to end up? Is that, is that what I'm here to do? Is that my purpose? You know, uh, I don't know. I don't know anymore. Yeah, I honestly can, don't know where I'm at. I'm going to, I'm going to jump in and make a comment. I want your response. Um, uh, recently, uh, you invited me up to participate in, in your documentary on channeling, right? So, uh, I sat down with you and we did a, a, a wonderful taping and had a great time. But uh, I asked you then, what's going on with the radio show? If you're over here, you know, for months at a time shooting a documentary, documentaries, you know, as in plural, um, two different projects. What about the show? And you were like, man, this is this is what I want to do right now. And I saw the passion in your eyes. And then you and I had an off camera discussion about some of these subjects that you are working on and your passion about it was frightening to me in that you knew this is what you were going to do and that's it. And, and you were moving forward. And I got to say, uh, I think you found your bliss. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, God, you know, it's not been an easy road there. It's not, it has not been an easy road. Um, I don't know. Where do you want to start here? Yeah, I know. Right. I know. I know. I know. I know. Okay. Um, let's kind of go, let's go here first. Um, I said to you off camera, um, I would never want to be caught by you. (laughs) I said, and I said, I said, man, I, you know, you're the last person person that i would want sniffing around me and and you understand exactly what i'm saying here uh when you're once you once you pick up on the scent kevin is it your personality you're not going to let it go till you get to the end if i find that there's overwhelming evidence to show that something is not true and you have the evidence there to show it, and it's repeatable. That's totally different. That's totally different. Um, you know, I mean, armchair research is one thing, and armchair research is very important. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I have nothing bad to say about people, you know, who don't go on the road and actually, you know, uncover things, right, and knock door to door. Um, but when you know something's true, and uh, you you're kind of the only one that knows it and you can't really shout it out too much Mm -hmm. that can turn to a lot of anger sometimes and i I can definitely say that's where i am right now definitely and is yeah anger anger i call it passion uh but that's exactly what i see in you and how do you deal with it you know what i mean Uh, how do you deal with it do you just work do you meditate, you know, because you're you're on a path that we're about to get into right now that is uh, going to be very, very, very revealing. And as you started to peel back the layers and your blood is starting to boil, you can't let it get out of control. So how do you control it? See, you're doing yeah. it now. You're breathing, right? You know, um... <laughs> Um, 
I, I don't. I, I, I don't. I, I will just go out and do a, a video on my YouTube channel and I'll talk about whatever it is at that moment that, you know, that that's whatever it is I'm covering and stuff. Um, but but to deal with it, well, do you know, it's difficult because, you know, if it's not a video you put in out and, it, and it's and it's you, you know, something that's 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 so big yet others don't. Uh, it's difficult. It is very difficult. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it, I, I've been honestly sat in a lot of uh, frustration, pain and everything else with this current documentary that I'm working on and, 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 and see what others are saying about it that are carrying this story forward. I, I just shake my head at this whole industry sometimes. But at the same time, I, 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 you know, you have to keep reminding yourself of why you're doing what you're doing and that you're doing it for the better of others, hopefully. And that, you know, that this is a, you know, a real true story because you've done your read. Had I not done my research, Jimmy, I wouldn't be as passionate because, you know, it, how, you, I wouldn't go against someone unless I had the facts. Do you know what I mean? That, that would be plain wrong. Do you know what I mean? If I if I was to say to you right now, I think, you know, you know, the, the Corey story is totally false or Emery Smith is, is totally false or David Wilcock is, you know, is, is making stuff up. I wouldn't know that unless I'd actually researched them properly, you know, prop, properly from a, a grounded perspective. But, you know, I have with one particular documentary that I'm working on now, and that's why I'm, I'm probably heated up. So uh, what are you working on? Well, you know what it is. It's the the Mark Richards documentary. It's called Captain Mark Richards. www dot captain mark richards dot com. Now, now for captain those, mark Richards, oh, okay, yeah, go you're gonna go. No, you, go you were gonna. I was gonna say for those that don't know, who is uh, Mark Richards? Well, he's not a captain, and he's uh, not been in outer space. Let's just say that. He was part of a murder on July 6, 1982. He murdered his good friend, Richard Baldwin, at 36B Front Street um, for money. For money, I will say that. That's definitely been confirmed. I'm actually in Marin County right now filming that documentary for the second time. Um, I, I filmed it back in September, and the research just went into a different direction for that documentary, and I missed out quite a bit on the on the first take because it's such a a, a big um, uh, story in a sense. It's so varied. So um, Mark Richards um, was a criminal back in the day, and I've now got the proof to show that. Um, I've interviewed uh, the lead detective uh, that arrested um, a guy called Crossin Hoover. So let me just paraphrase the story like this. So Mark Richards murdered. Um, Richard Baldwin, with the help of two teenagers. One was Crossing Hoover, which actually did the murder. The other was Andrew Campbell that, that got state testimony and you know, was let free after being uh, in juvenile, uh, after being in jail for a while. But it was, it was called something else. It's not jail. Okay, and, so um, M Mark yeah. Richards was convicted of the murder. So Mark Richards was committed to the first degree murder. Yeah. Sentenced to life without parole life on, without, so, in 1984. And he's currently uh, incarcerated where? Incarcerated right now. In, um, uh, he was in Vacaville. He's now in, uh, where is he? Let me just, uh, he's now in, no, he's in Vacaville now. Sorry. He's, they, they, they change prison every 15 years as a, as a lifer that's been in for 36 years. He's been to various different prisons, Folsom and, and another one, but he's in Vacaville right now. Vacaville now Vacaville is also the state prison's mental hospital uh, prison. Is he, is he in Vacaville because of that? No, no, no he's just in gen. All. He's in gen pop at Vacaville. Yes, he's been there for however many years right now, and he'll probably stay there for the rest of his life, hopefully, as well. Um, so uh, the murder happened in 1982. When was he convicted? 1984. 1984. So that now that is 30, 35 years he's been in prison. No, 36 years. Or 36. He was in prison back then. Right, right, right. I got you. I got you. So 36 years, convicted of first-degree murder, life without parole, where yeah, Crossing Hoover committed the murder on his behalf. He uh, was running a uh, cult called Pendragon, and uh, he absolutely um, twisted the minds of Crossing Hoover and Andrew Campbell. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been interviewing Crossing Hoover for a few weeks now, many weeks over recorded prison lines back in the day, back, you know, when I started the research back in June. And, um, 
Now, Mark there's Richards. a there's a reason why we're talking about Mark Richards. We're going to get to that in a second. I know the That's audience cool. is going, okay, what? Uh, this is a... Well, Mark, let me just say, Mark Richards is Kerry Cassidy's top whistleblower. So she's interviewed him 10 times now from prison. She's been to see him. Right. And uh, uh, she's not interviewed any of the lead witnesses that I have. Um, she's into only interviewed Mark Richards and taken the words of Mark Richards. And now, where does the... Oh, kill- and his wife, Joanne, as well. Obviously, Joanne is Mark Richards' current wife, and she goes on the UFO circuit to promote Mark Richards' work through the Earth Defense Headquarters, which, luckily, I got to go. I got to see just recently, and I actually got to speak to the neighbors, which was nice as well, and uh, told them that the Earth Defense Headquarters is there to, you know, look after them at the nighttime. So that was nice. Uh, the uh, the captain part of Mark Richards. What 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 are you alluding Stolen to? Stolen valor. There? Stolen valor. It's not true at all. He is no captain. In and the it, navy. It's crazy because uh, actually, at the Smithsonian Museum in um, Washington, right. you know, there's a donation there made to have his father and him put on the plaque there as one of the plaques. So that was incredible to see that as well. But, you know, anyone can do just a donation and be put on there. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, But just just the craziness of it all. So he said that he was a captain in the Navy. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, captain in the Navy um, in in Vietnam, which is not true at all, because we've now met the friends who place him uh, um, at, uh, you know, being here on planet Earth in Marin County, because I'm in Marin County right now. Mm hmm. And um, no, none of it's true. And um, the sad thing is that this was a real murder. You know, Richard Baldwin was a real person. And I met his sister, Susan Baldwin, in Marin, in uh, Maine, sorry. Right. And um, she was as devastated as anyone could be 36 years later. And she was so upset that someone called Kerry Cassidy and Joanne Richards was perpetuating the lies and crap of Mark Richards. And uh, it was just very, very, very sad. Okay, let's, uh, let's, stay, let's stay on this. So uh, at what point uh, he's convicted? He gets convicted of murder. This is in court, done, jury. He's convicted of the murder, even though I, I believe he was, he was present at the murder. He watched. He was. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. Listen, listen, listen. I've got the I've been interviewing and sat down with the lead detective that uh, arrested Cross and Hoover right. on July 13th, the week after the murders. And he's just given me six cassette tapes of the police interview. OK. And listening to the Cross and Hoover. And you know that I've put that vlog out just recently and people can go to my channel and watch that vlog that I put out, which was meant to be angry. It was meant. To, and that, that's where I'm coming from right now. And in that vlog, you'll hear the description of 17 year old Cross in how he killed Richard Baldwin and how he did it on the orders of Mark Richards, who was stood one foot away from him. He was not having tea with mummy and daddy who are now passed away. Mm -hmm. He was there. And for Kerry Cassidy to have taken this story as her top whistleblower and to believe the word of Mark Richards and Simon Parks, that's verifying the story and some other idiot that I can't remember his name right now. Uh, It's a sad day when you call yourself a top journalist. It's a very sad day. It's a sad day for our community as well. But I've got to thank them because, you know, they gave me a wonderful documentary to put back the the, the memory of Richard Baldwin. So thank you very much, Kerry. Well, let's uh, let's 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 uh, I want to stay focused here on on, on Mark Richards for a second. Where did the captain part? uh, That seems like it came from Kerry Cassidy or Joanne Richards, or or the mind of the uh, very sick and psychopathic Mark Richards. Um, Now, the problem is here, right, is that a lot of people did not want to come on this documentary right now because they are scared shitless of this man because of his ability to manipulate people and his ability to manipulate current people in the jail cells that are leaving right now to do his bidding. I don't give two shits. Come kill me. I don't really care. Right. I'd rather get this story out, right? But honestly, meeting people, elder people who are scared right now, wow, wow, that's how psychopathic this okay. nasty man was. Okay, so, but, uh, okay, but why 
uh, why insert the captain part? I mean, uh, where... oh, come on, Jimmy, you know why, you know why. It, it's, it's to give it validation and everything else. It's, listen, if you're able to go to prison and you're the only one in this community that's, that's, that's researching someone that's in prison, that's apparently part of the secret space program, it's ching, 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 and it's also socialization. Oh, you know, okay. Um, no, I got you. Okay, so you, the <sighs> the captain part it was there because he was uh, a captain in the secret space program. He was never a captain. No, he was a, cap- not a captain. I know that. I know. Uh, I'm trying to establish a timeline here. So, well, he, the timeline of the captain, I would say, I'm going to put this out on a limb here and say that came from Crazy Carrie Cassidy. I'm going to say that. Okay. So, but but he, just think about this, right? Just think. You know, if this is her top whistleblower and she does not want to see my evidence and she put a private investigator on me, the guy investigating it, right? Mm-hmm. And no one gave two shits in the community when that came out. There was more concern. Is Kerry okay? Am I attacking her too much? Am I being too nasty to her? I, you know, I mean, hello. You know, I'm the one that's been doing the research on this along with other people that joined me on the journey to begin with. And we'll get into some of those other people in just a minute, right? And, uh, you know, it's... You know, and some people, you know, what was so sad, you know, what's so sad, sat with a detective, lead detective that's dealt with many murders, not just this, right, many murders, and just to feel so embarrassed in front of him. I felt so stupid in front of him. I felt so stupid to try to tell him what was going on and what was going on in this community, you know, and, and he, he was just shaking his head that people would believe Mark Richards. It, it was so embarrassing. Okay, uh, so um, we're, we're going to head towards a break here shortly. So his story from prison, uh, at what point did this secret space program, Captain Mark Richards, what year did this start to surface? I would say it was a few years after Joanna, Joanne Richards met him. And that was when, um, you know, he knew he had someone he could manipulate again. And also, obviously, she's got the, the family home, which is worth millions. You know, she's got that in a trust now. So I would say that, you know, if I've got a house that's worth millions of if it was just the, the house was destroyed and the grounds was available. Right. Because the house is in disrepair. I've, I've been down to uh, the family home. Then, yeah, you know, maybe she'll keep a lie going just, you know, because when he kicks this, when he, when he, when he dies, then maybe, you know, she's going to get that. Or maybe she's just as, you know, she she believes him. I, I don't know. There's many questions that I've still got right. with Joanne that I'm still researching right now Did and the, joanne if you listen to this yes i am still researching you hun- i've not given up on you don't worry okay so the uh uh the secret space program didn't come up in court testimony oh come on jimmy come no, on no i'm asking you i, I haven't you, researched this out no that's that's the insanity of our community to even think that was a, a reality right right very interesting and so uh, apparently, Mark is sitting in a jail cell, uh, and he had years to... Uh, He's a fantasy writer. Right. Mark is interviewing his friends, and I'm the only one that's doing it right now, right, along with my producer, in- interviewing his friends, right? This is what he was back in the day. He was, was a science a, he, fiction... He, 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 no, he was a he was a bullshit artist. No, no cussing on the show. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but that's what it is. I'm I'm sorry, but but my but my I'm so angry right now with this and the way I've been trapped by this community as well. well so angry. Well, you know, it's, I mean, I expect it's, it's it. Tough. I expect it. I expect it. Right. At the same time, you know what? I found my bliss. I can't complain too much. Right. It's, it's a double edged sword. It really is. Right. So what uh, what is the the fantasy part of Mark Richards' story? What Everything. is it? What what? No, I, uh, hold on, hold on, Kevin, focus, focus. What what is what is his story? Is he saying that he was part of the secret space program and he was off planet, yeah. and that's why he he couldn't have committed the murder? Am I understanding you correctly that he wasn't even He's here? He's saying that he was having yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, he's saying that he was framed for the murder of Richard Baldwin, that these two young boys did the murder and he helped them to get rid of the body because they, you know, he he liked them. So, you know, let's help them get rid of the body. So not only did he get rid of the body, but he spent on Mr. Baldwin's credit card when the body was missing for a week at daily in San Francisco and other places. Look, he disposed right. of the body, so he, he he arranged the killing. He had actually got he wanted Willie Robles, another young man, um, to uh, do the murder for him. Willie denied that, and when he met Cross and Hoover, Crossin was an angry, 
um, a little bit damaged young man who, you know, just wanted love, just wanted to, he, he wanted a father figure and he found it in Mark. And Mark saw that he could manipulate this young 17 year old and he did because he, want, he had a death list. He had a death list with many people on that death list. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Baldwin was the top of that death list. And why? Okay. For money. So, money, money, money. Uh, uh, the murder was committed for money, too? Yes, of course it was. And I'm going to prove that in the documentary. Okay. Because I, right. I've, I've now found the proof of that. And, and I, went to back, I went back to the detectives with the proof, and they said, we don't care, Kev. He's been done. He's in serving his time. We don't care anymore. Right, right. Yeah, I can, I can understand that, too, as well. But um, these people came forward that I've interviewed because they cannot believe that he's made his way into the UFO community. They are, they are sickened by it. I mean, I've, I've interviewed his wife, his wife back in the day. She's, so, you know, she's, she's upset. She's upset that this is even happening. And she came on because she wanted to say who this man really was. And she can't believe that someone called Kerry is doing what she's doing. She can't believe that someone called Joanne is doing what they're doing. It's, it's, it's sad, but it is what it is. And this is our community. And uh, so the the I, this is how I'm painting it in my mind. He is hoping that this star, it's not going to get him out of prison. So is he doing this all because he's bored? He's got nothing to do. I mean, I don't. Well, that's, he's a psychopath. He's a psychopath. Right. Don't right. That. Right. And and actually, uh, here's the thing. He wanted to set up Camelot back in the day. Um, he wanted to set up uh, the new Camelot in Marin County. He wanted to take Marin County over and set up. Uh, uh, he was he was he was fascinated by Camelot. OK. And what Kerry Cassidy's done is fulfill that legacy. She's now she Kerry Cassidy knew him before he you know, before she set up uh, Project Camelot. And um, obviously he's now got his Camelot through Kerry Cassidy and he's now got his cult following that he always wanted. Well done, everybody involved. Wow, wow. Okay, all right. Uh, now I'm starting to follow things here. Crazy, crazy complex situation. Let's take a break. Our guest tonight is Kevin Moore, formerly of The Moore Show. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We'll be right back more with Kevin right after this. Stay with us. You have just listened to a full hour free preview of Fade to Black. To get the full show, all archives, just go to our podcast section at jimmychurchradio.com. You can also sign up to be a Fade or Not in our membership area, where we have downloadable MP3s. Go to jimmychurchradio.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. 